Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by the House of Worship Technology YouTube channel. I'm Matt McQueen, and this is another episode of Church Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we are talking about how to use a direct box with your bass guitar amplifier, and why you would want to use a direct box with your bass guitar amplifier. There are a couple of reasons. First of all, many bass guitar amps these days, modern bass amps, are going to have a direct out built into the back of them where the bass guitar player can simply plug into his amp and then use the DI out to go straight to the console, the, the mixing board, and you as the engineer can then mix that DI output in with the rest of the band and the bass player can use his amp to get the sound that he wants to hear while he's on stage. And many sound engineers will use this DI output in conjunction with a microphone that's made for getting bass frequencies. A good example of this is the Shure Beta 52, but what if you run into a situation where you don't have an extra kick drum mic, or you don't have a DI output built into your amplifier, and you'll see this on many older, you know, vintage or late 70s, early 80s, solid state bass guitar amps that a lot of players are still using, won't always have a DI output built into it, or if you're in a smaller church with a younger bass player, or he's got a smaller practice combo amp, maybe you want a quieter stage volume, so you've got a tiny amp, then you won't always have the uh, direct output built into those smaller combo amps either, and you still need a way to get the bass guitar signal into the console so that you can mix it in with the band without having to mic up the amplifier or rely on the bass player to turn the amplifier up really loudly and fill the room up. And so what you can do is you can use just a simple direct box. This one is from Behringer. It's very affordable. It's less than $30, I believe. And you can spend 50, 75, 100, even $300 on direct boxes. They're really all over the spectrum and they have many different features if you spend more money, but most of them around the $100 or less range are gonna have the same subset of features. It's gonna have an input, it's gonna have a parallel throughput jack, and then it's also going to have the XLR output built into the back of it. And so what you would want to do in this situation is you would have the bass guitar player plug into the input or the parallel jack on the direct box, and then you would run a second quarter inch cable from the DI to the bass guitar amplifier's input jack. Now the bass player has the controls of the amplifier at his feet where he can adjust them and get the tone that he wants and hear the, hear, hear the sound of the bass, how he wants to hear it from the amplifier. And then you, as the tech, can take and plug into the XLR jack, the output of the direct box, and go straight to your snake or your mixing console and be able to get the sound that you want in the front of house speakers and mix the band, uh, mix the bass guitar in with the band. Um, another great application for this is if you are recording then you might want to have the direct box signal so that you can either reamp it later or so that you can manipulate it in Pro Tools or Logic or some sort of recording software and you'll have the, the bass guitar signal as it came from the bass guitar without having to worry about microphone bleed or things like that on the bass guitar amplifier. So, you wanna use a direct box. I use them all the time. We have guys at my church that use smaller combo amps from time to time, and it's just a great way to blend in the direct sound of the bass in with the bass guitar amp or just use it by itself. So I recommend you do that. And I just wanna tell you in closing that this tip comes from this great book that I've been reading through. Um, we have partnered up with a guy named James Wasm, who's the author of this book, Great Church Sound. Uh, you can go and check him out on Facebook. You can find him on Twitter. I'll provide links in the description below. There's tons of great information in this book for beginning sound engineers and even people who have been doing it a little bit longer. It's a great refresher and you'll find a ton of information like this one. So this has been Church Tech Tip Tuesday. I'll see you next week.